Hi guys, welcome back to the Revive Stronger channel. I'm your host as always, Steve Hall. Today we are going over some amazing takeaways again from episode 142 with Mike Isratel. So let's go over those takeaway points. Takeaway point number one is that it's super important to have a foundational education. That's within training, within nutrition, so that when you are looking at respected sources or th sources you think are respected, you can actually have a very objective view of what they are pushing and whether or not there are any red flags that come up during that. When dieting, there may well be a slight strength reduction or at least actually a strength maintenance. If you're consistently losing strength week in, week out during a dieting phase, you may well be losing muscle. Now, when there's less energy availability within the body, we can't produce as much force, there is going to be a stabilization in strength, so we can't expect to keep progressing like we normally would, but if you're consistently seeing strength decrements, you may well be losing muscle, and that's probably something you want to avoid. Now, when dieting, because we have less glycogen availability, and because we see a little bit of a a conversion towards more slow twitch muscle fiber types, we slowly potentially see a decrease in our performance in eight repetition ranges or less, and actually see a better maintained performance in a higher repetition zone. So that's something to think about and consider when you are assessing your training and programming your training within a dieting phase, especially for a prolonged period of time. Takeaway point number four is that if you want to get very lean, and for males, we're talking sub 10%, close towards kind of that 5% bodybuilding style of leanness where you've got those gnarly glutes, triceps striations, and all that sort of jazz. And for females, you can go close to that 10% mark rather than that 5% mark, and you're going to be super duper lean as a female um, if you get down close to those margins. Sometimes you have to be realistic in that there's going to be a trade-off in which you may have to sacrifice some strength and potentially some muscle mass if you really want to get to those gnarly levels of leanness. Now, there's many approaches that you can do to mitigate this, but sometimes those aren't even enough. And there's going to be genetics involved, various things involved, but sometimes you really have to make that calculated trade-off. Takeaway point number five is that most sources of protein are nowhere near as stimulative of insulin as carbohydrate. Whey protein may be the only exception to that rule of thumb, but in general, that's not going to be a strategy in which you utilize lots of protein within your diet to try and get that insulinogenic response and have that high insulin uh, environment. Rather, you would still utilize the higher carbohydrate approach um, rather than going for the high protein approach because it's only whey protein that seems to have that huge insulin response. Most proteins don't have that and carbohydrates generally are way more insulinogenic. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed these takeaway points. As always, give us a like, give us a share, give us a comment. We always appreciate that. Share it over on Instagram. And our favorite quote from today's podcast is, if you don't think you can push it, just deload. There's no point risking it. So guys, again, thank you and revive stronger.